our fifth month of the Sew Together 21 challenge that I'm doing over on Instagram. If you've missed out on what this is, basically when So My Style dressed suddenly was no more, I decided kind of on a whim that I wanted to pick up where they left off, making some modifications just to ensure that it was something that I was going to be able to keep up with as an organizer. And so far, it's been really great. Um, so every month, I pick a category of patterns um, and then four patterns within that category, post them all to Instagram. All my Instagram followers vote on the pattern and whichever one gets the most votes wins. So for May, I thought it would be fun to do a romper. So I put up some romper patterns. Everyone had the options of choosing between the Made for Mermaids Willow, the Love Notions Sunday, Ready to Sew has one that's free, and Seamwork Lucy and everyone voted on the Love Notions Sunday Romper. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Sunday Romper. I'm gonna be telling you all about the pattern. I am gonna be talking about suitable fabrics, showing you three fabrics that I have uh, picked out from my stash. I'm encouraging everyone to shop their stash for Sew Together 21 just as an added bonus. It's absolutely not necessary to do, but as you can see, I have a large stash, so I always try to shop my stash first. And with little challenges like this, I find it easy to kind of just do one stash buster a month. So, all right, so the Sunday romper, and before you're like, I don't do rompers, there's also a dress version, okay? So the Sunday romper um, is the romper that everyone can wear. That's what they're claiming. <laughs> the front and back V-neck openings allow for easy on and off. Front angled pockets are super practical and look great. And elasticated casing at the natural waist makes this easy to fit and wear. And then you can choose from a tank top or a dolman bodice. Five bottom options, including kind of uh, a shorts option, cropped pants, full length pants, a maxi skirt, and a knee length skirt. And then obviously if you wanted to do a mini skirt or a midi skirt, you could easily make those accommodations too. This romper is meant for knit fabrics. Um, there is also a standard bust and a full bust, like two separate pattern pieces when you get your patterns printed so that you, if you're used to having to do full bust adjustments, you may not have to do them with this pattern. Obviously, if you are an A cup, um, you might still have to do a small bust adjustment to the standard version. And if you're anything larger than maybe a double D, I don't know what their uh, busts include. It's written on the pattern pieces though. Um, I think if you're bigger than a double D, then you might still have to do a full bust adjustment, but it's certainly just something for you to check. It's really easy to do. Just measure um, the difference between your high bust and your full bust, and that determines your pattern bust cup. And then you can make either standard or um, full bust options. I love that they include that. Um, and then the it's a PDF pattern, obviously. So it comes in letter size, A4 paper size. There's the trimless format, which if I'm going to tape together patterns, it's going to be the trimless paper. They also have large format file. So you can send it off to Sublime Graphics and have it printed on the tissue paper or the tracing paper if you want. And then... They also have a projector file. So if you're into the projectors, you can do that as well. So looking through these photos here, yeah, so looking at the kind of line drawings and looking through what I assume are their tester makes, I know that they do a lot of testing there, um, kind of reiterating the description, you do have that front V and the back V. So basically the way that you get into it is you step into it and then those the wide neckline widens up like a big giant mouth <laughs> and you step in, you pull the elastic of the waist out and then you're able to step in and pull it on. Um, it has the dolman option, which just is like a, kind of like a grown on sleeve. It's kind of just a elongated shoulder or you have the tank option, which I think is really cute too. And then for the bottoms, you guys, my goodness, three different pants lengths, so five inch inseam, which is a little long. That might be something that I look at shortening, but we'll get to that. Um, then there's the cropped pant version, which I absolutely will be making in the fall. 
and the long pants version, which I think in a, something very neutral and staple like fabric, like a cotton jersey black, I think you would wear that to death. The pants version, even if it's just the tank uh, pants version where you can throw on cardigans and light jackets. I know for me being in the Southeast, that's how I would do it. But if you're in like a warmer climate, you could totally make the dolman version. And adding a sleeve to a dolman is not that difficult. Let me know if you guys want a tutorial on how to do that. It's very, very simple. Um, so those are your options for that. I do love the little drawstring. So it's elastic plus a drawstring. So you can make your elastic a little bit looser and then tighten and loosen the drawstring. If you're someone like me that goes through periods of inflammation and belly protuberances and some days are good and some days you're just extremely bloated, um, you can adjust that accordingly. So I really love that. And then the square pocket design is really fun as well. And then of course, if you're not into rompers, um, then you can make the dress version. Um, the dress is in two lengths. It still has the V in the front and the V in the back. Again, that is something you can fill in in the back if you didn't want it to drop down to a V. It's not gonna show your bra or anything, but if you just didn't want that much skin showing, you could definitely, for the dress, since you can pull it over your head and get into it that way, you don't need to have the double V opening for the dress. Just something to think about there. Um, okay, so it is meant for fa uh, knit fabrics. Just looking through a few of these tester makes here. It does look like the front is finished with a band, which is really nice. The dolman sleeves are hemmed, like by turning under, and the same thing with the skirt. So I am going to encourage you guys to, and as I'm looking at some of these tester makes too, it seems like the bodice is very blousey. That is not something that I love. I get having a little bit of wearing ease in the length, um, but I don't love it to kind of double over. I feel like that adds volume to my waist and I'm trying to eliminate that as much as possible. So that's something I will look into kind of reducing the length of the bodice. I'll measure it, put it on my ditto form probably because my ditto form has my waist measurement on it. I will know exactly where that elastic is supposed to hit. And then I can add in, I don't know, probably cut what they have in half, maybe one or two inches I will add in. Um, there are some people who kind of just pulled theirs down, like made the elastic a little bit wider, pulled theirs down for kind of like a drop waist dress, which is also really, really cute. You can do that with the dress relatively easily. With the romper though, that is also going to pull down your crotch line. So that would look a little bit funny, but with the dress, you can absolutely do that. Um, really beautiful tester makes really, really cute. Um, it does look like, I'm trying to look at just the shorts versions, but it does look like there is like the rise and all of that stuff looks really good in all of the shorts versions. I'm not seeing any wedgies. I'm not seeing any camel toes. Um, it looks to be just about right. So I'll be checking that against my crotch curve and my crotch depth um, and see where we go from there. So that's what I have to say about fit, but I encourage you, there are so, 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 so many tester versions. So if you wanna see them on a bunch of different body types, styled a bunch of different ways, dressed up or dressed down, solid fabrics, print fabrics, um, you can do that. There's someone, there's some people who did like, so it looks like separates where the top is a solid color and then the bottom is a separate, is a different color. Um, that's a really cute idea. Again, if you're using up your stash and you only have a little bit of so a couple of fabrics, you can do them that way. So go check out the tester makes. They all look pretty good. Um, I'll be doing my usual pant adjustments um, and then probably shorting the bodice a little bit. So um, also pay a lot of attention to the types of fabrics people are using. It doesn't say on there, but you can definitely tell what's a drapier fabric and what is more stable. I 100% prefer a more stable fabric in a romper because the short, because it is going over your bum, through your crotch, if it's too thin, I almost just kind of feel a little bit naked, almost like this feels like I should be wearing it to bed, you know, it doesn't feel like very comfortable to go out in. 
And then on top of that, something else to consider with your thin fabrics is that the pockets are probably gonna look a little bit sloppy in a thinner fabric. I might be eliminating the pockets altogether. I just find that pockets on a knit, I just don't really love it unless it's a super, super stable knit. Um, especially on my thighs, I feel like the pocket bags kind of bunch up and it's just really not a cute look. So take a look at these tester makes, pay attention to those few details and decide for yourself the kind of alterations that you want to make. There are quite a few people who left the um, pockets off. Um, so that maybe there it's easy, maybe it's even in the instructions on how to do that. Um, but because I have a fuller hip, yeah, the knit pockets are just really, really tough for me. Um, I also want to say there's a little girl's version. So if you wanted to do a mommy and me thing, that would be so, so, so sweet. Okay, let's talk about fabric. So I pulled three fabrics from my stash all three in different sort of weights, all three different substrates. So let's talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of each of them. None of them, unfortunately, are like an obvious choice. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. <laughs> um, but I'll talk you through all of them. Then you let me know in the comment section below which one you think I should use. I'll heed your advice, consider it deeply, and then ultimately make my own decision. <laughs> How does that sound? Okay, so let's start with the one that I think is the least good option and why. So this is a really beautiful double brush poly. I got it from So So English Fabrics a couple of years ago. Um, double brush poly, if you don't know it, is super, super soft. Super soft hand feel. It's soft on the right side and the wrong side, double brushed. Um, it is kind of lightweight. It's more of a midweight, a midweight knit for sure, but still has some really beautiful drapes. Some of my favorite dresses with like circle skirts and things like that are made from double brushed poly and it's really, really nice. The problem with double brushed poly is that in the summer, when it is very hot and humid here, I don't know that I want to be wearing 100% polyester. <sighs> It's probably not going to be that big of a deal, but I say that and then I make this and even if I make the tank top version, it's, you know, one of those things where I would feel like I wouldn't really be reaching for it in the summertime because I would just feel like it's too hot, too clingy, too stuffy feeling. Um, and so I think I would rather save it in such a beautiful color too. Um, I'd rather save it for like a fall pattern. Um, something maybe probably even a dress i mean this could be a fall pattern with the um like cropped pant i think that would be really cute in this or maybe i could make the dress version in this and have that for like spring and fall i just don't know that it is what i want to make this sunday romper out of because it's already may and june july august as we know are sweltering um humidity like 70, 80, 90% humidity, um, 90 degree temperatures. So that's why I think I'm gonna pass on this one for now. There will be other versions of this. And like I said, I might end up making it into like a little dress that I could throw a little jacket on. And that now I'm wearing it, you know, October, November, February, March, for, for a good months of wear. Um, and maybe extending that a little bit too, depending on, you know, how the weather fluctuates during the transitional months. Okay. The next one is this um, midweight cotton jersey from Stylemaker Fabrics. As a substrate, this fabric is perfect. 100% exactly what I would want to make my um, romper out of. It is stable. Um, it is, a, it's a midweight. Um doesn't have a ton of drape, which we're not really looking for, for this pattern. Um, it's really soft, comfortable cotton jersey. It's like if you made a t-shirt romper, it would be that, but a little bit weightier than that. The problem that I have with this one is that it's the color. The color isn't very summery. It's kind of like this 
maroon, like almost with like an orange tint to it. Again, super great for the fall. I think this would be like, as an example, when I told you guys earlier, the tank version with the pants in a solid color, kind of like a neutral, you would wear it over and over and over again. You could match it up with all kinds of different jackets and cardigans and different cover-ups and wear it on its own. And you would have something that you would reach for all the time. That's kind of how I, I see this. I don't see this as a summer thing though. So both of these actually would be those kind of fall, spring, transitional types of garments if I made the romper out of either of these. In a perfect world, I would go to Stylemaker Fabrics and get this in a spring year color. They have like 45,000 colors of this. <laughs> Not really that many, but they have a lot of colors in this. I think in the 20s. Um, so I could easily find a color that is more springy. That's the same fabric that I use for my Stylemaker Fabrics Spring Style Tour. The um, little crop top that I made, same exact fabric. So I know I would love it um, in a lighter color, but I am really trying to not buy fabrics for so together. That's why it's like an added challenge. It's supposed to be like a little bit difficult. So the last thing I have is this guy and I don't know where I got this. Um, I think I got it in New York City. I don't exactly know where. It's a really, really pretty print. I absolutely love the print. I think it's really cool on my skin tone. Um, but the problem is you can see kind of how drapey it is, right? Pretty drapey, pretty thin. Um, it's the thinnest of all the options here. So I just don't know how that is going to lay over my body. As I'm doing stuff like this, it's not that bad. I just wanna make sure that I'm not gonna feel naked when I have this on as a romper. I wanna feel like it's not one of those things that just feels too flimsy, you know what I mean? You guys go buy the Sunday Romper from Love Notions. Um, their patterns are 40% off un until May the 10th. Um, which makes this pattern $7.20. Um, get it printed, shop your stash. Regarding your fabrics, you are going to be looking for something in your stash that is a, they say light to medium weight uh, uh, knits, like Jersey, Modal, Cupro, and Rayon blends. I personally, for the shorts, for the romper version, would stick to mid-weight jerseys. For the dress version, I think the world is your oyster and you can absolutely use those lightweight fabrics. Um, just consider the pockets, consider what happens, you know what happens when you wear pockets, if they either work for you or they don't. That's it, that's Sew Together 21 for May. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that I went over today. If you are a hem cider, you can come to the Thursday uh, Zooms and show me there. Um, but that's only open to threads and scissors, um, hem ciders. So join and come chat with us in the Zoom. You can show me your fabrics and all that kind of stuff. I also help with fitting during those. So if you have any questions about that, um, I could answer all of those for you in our Thursday Zooms. But that is it. That is going to do it for me today. I have a lot of thinking to do. <laughs> but I thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.